today we actually get this running under its own steam at last. I hope. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I've just finished putting all the plugs on the end of this umbilical cord and we're going to connect it into the electronic control box that I've finished this morning making and uh, so we'll do that right now. So you can see I've, I've marked everything clearly on here so uh, you know we don't get confused plugging these in. So I'll just plug these in and get back to you. Okay so we're all plugged in Got the earth connected here, which gives an earth to the chassis of this. So let's turn it around. So now the uh, the big test is to see whether they actually work. Um, I am going to have an external uh, on-off switch, but I haven't actually sorted that out yet that actually turns on the main power supply there for the, the stepper motors um, so first of all we'll press the reset I mean, there's no alarms of any sort so you know I'd say it'd be all okay I'll just zoom you in a little. Let's see if we can get something to move. So I've just taken the reset off, which is done by this button here across with some, with some uh, dots on. Um, I will later on give a, a close up of this panel and take you through some of the screens to set up some of the uh, motor parameters and. Um, Actually, hopefully, I'm going to get the limit switches on here and get those set up in here, and the soft limits. Uh, we'll see how it goes. See if it all works first. So we're going to try the x-axis first. Oh, whoa! <laughs> that works fine. Why? Z. Oh, that's working actually in reverse to what we need. So we'll put that right first and I'll show you how to do that. Now you can either use this selection wheel, uh, this also acts as an MPG as well if you wish, um, but we're going to is a combination of this and these buttons so we're going to press OK there and come to motor set OK now the one we need to alter to alter direction of the stepper motor is uh, this one here um, direction now we need to alter that figure there um, Incidentally, these are general settings for uh, stepper motors. Now, we are not tuning the stepper motor, so we're not going to alter any of these. Um, so what we're going to do is go to here, press OK, press 1. OK, so this is um, either 1 or 0. Then press it, press it again till it goes red. Then you can move the selector. Now you must come back and save. Okay. And exit. And you can actually use the arrow, direction arrows to move around the screen. Now press reset. Now I'll zoom you back out and we will test the Z axis. Okay, Z axis, up and down. So that's how to correct that. 
Um, so it's very, very simple. It is, it's just like Mac 3 or Mac 4, but built into one unit. You know, it's laid out very similar, really. Um, and we will, together, you know, sort of uh, go through um, every part of this controller over the next coming months. So we get a full understanding of the total operation of this SMC5 unit. Okay, now for the moment um, I have the spindle set up to operate separately. <clears throat> but I do intend in the future to operate the spindle from the SMC controller. Um, it has the ability to uh, operate um, either uh, 0 to 10 volt, which is, I understand how this control, this um, spindle power supply operates, um, or it will operate um, a normal type CNC spindle via VFD. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to fire up the spindle because I haven't... That was the last job I did just now actually was plug the spindle in. So um, and I've got that operating on a separate switch as well. Oh! That is so quiet! That's doing about Five six thousand RPM. About eight or nine thousand. About twelve thousand. Actually, the noise that you can hear is the fan on the top, and it's actually blowing quite a bit of air. Let's take it all the way up. Twenty thousand out here. Turn it off. Well, I'm pleased with that. That's that's quiet. It's no louder than any, you know, one point five kilowatt air cooled. Spindle, you know, it's no louder, it's about the same. Um, obviously a water-cooled one is quieter because you don't have the, the fan noise. I mean, you know, the, most of that noise, I'm sure you heard yourself, was the actual fan on the top, which blows quite a bit of air, actually. Um, I'm, I'm well pleased with that little spindle, actually. It seems that uh, it is... You know, sort of, um, there's, there's no vibration there. You know, I got my arm on here and I couldn't feel the thing running at all. So it's, uh, it's very, very well balanced. So I'm very pleased with that. Okay. Um, so what I want to do now is check to see, um, f the next thing I want to check is the pendant that came, came with this. So um, I've, I'll plug that in, get that all plugged up and um, turned on and we'll see how that performs. Okay, one pendant and I've just discovered a very nice touch. It's got um, a very strong magnet in the back of it and uh, which is, is nice, you know, if you could, you'll attach to the the panel with magnetism if I if I wish. So we'll um, we'll turn this on. Okay. Green light comes up on here. Release that. Lower setting. We're on X. Ooh. Oh extremely controllable. I'm gonna I'll zoom you in a little. That 
is very, very controllable. Very, very controllable. Okay. Um. Very controllable indeed. Uh, that works very, very nicely actually. I'm happy with that. What I want to actually find out is how far this is going to come forward and I want to line up with both sides and I, I want to find out where I'm going to put my my limit switch. I think I'm actually going to mount, I may mount the switch here, I'm not sure yet, uh, or I, you know, I may mount it actually on here somewhere, but I, I wanted to see how far forward we come it's very very controllable I'm just gonna zoom out a minute okay I'm going handheld here for a moment I just want to show you something we've got a bit of light here as well Okay, so I've just brought this up now manually and you can see that the end of the bearing there is flush with the end of the bearing of what I'm talking about, the shiny bit in the middle there. Okay, that's the ball screw and the bearing cap here or bearing mount is flush. Now, right the other side but I brought, you know, I only put this together and I haven't checked anything out. And you'll see here, all right, now these bits of CAD that you see, I'm just using as shims at the moment because I misplaced my, my uh, shim material. And to allow, you know, the, all the axes to, to run perfectly smooth, uh, sometimes it's necessary to shim some of the parts that you've made so they line up perfectly. So you can see now there's a bit of a gap there of about 1.5 millimeter. Now I'm going to show you how to align the gantry. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, if you see in there all the drivers are all lit up. Okay, so what I've done is I've put a switch in, in the circuit of this power supply that supplies the drivers here. Okay, so I switched the drivers off. So that in turn takes the magnetism out of, out of the motors, the holding torque, so I can turn this to a line. Now that is how you align the gantry up. And now I can turn it back on. And now it will run true together. Okay, so that's the easy method of lining the gantry up so it's perfectly, uh, not parallel, uh, 90 degrees with the, the rest of the, the machine. It's as easy as that, but you have to be able to turn off the motors but still have the controller uh, functioning. Um, because I have... Y axes 
motor and slave motor this side the second one see the first and the second one these drivers are connected up in parallel in other words they get an identical signal from one stream from the controller which is down here you can see here okay there's one stream coming out of uh, pull and direction going to uh, a pair of drivers that's all you need that's all you really need so that's all working it's all working i'm very very pleased Thank you.